Well, WWE is building to this Clash of the Castle, and the SmackDown show had a bunch of very good video packages about Drew McIntyre, and there was another one that uh, BT Sports did, which is on the internet, and uh, man, I watched these videos, and I don't know what they're going to do, but if it's not Drew, I don't know what they're going to do with this Roman Reigns. Who's beating this guy? Well, nobody's beaten him for a while. For a while. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's interesting they're doing the two-year celebration on, on the Friday show, this coming Friday. And two years is a long time, so it's like, you know, um, even if you want Roman Reigns and, and The Rock to be the championship match at WrestleMania next year, or Roman Reigns and somebody, if it's not The Rock, um, man, I don't even know who it would be if it's not The Rock. If it's not The Rock, it's Cody. Then, Well, if it's Cody, then Roman needs to get the championship back. If it's The Rock, he doesn't need the championship back. You can do Roman Reigns and The Rock without the title. Roman Reigns and Cody, um, I mean, if it's if it's going to be Cody, you know, um, going for the championship, you know, it could be Drew, that's fine. It could be Roman, that's fine, either way. And it could be Cody winning, you know. I mean, I guess it's going to be the Battle Royal winner, um, the Royal Rumble winner, that, that gets the, the shot in theory, except that if Roman is the champion, you know, you have to kind of throw that out and just... I guess you can do that on one night and, and, and uh, The Rock on the other night, have two championship matches on, on, you know, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. And there's nothing wrong with that either. Um, so, um, but yeah, like Roman Reigns does not have to be champion for the match with The Rock. But if you want it to be this great match, maybe maybe he does. But you can also, Drew can also win this match and lose it at the Rumble in a rematch or wherever, um, you know, it's, you know, you can definitely do that. He doesn't have to go almost three years as champion because because I can't imagine Rock beating him for the championship. That doesn't really make sense. I mean, you can do it for the, I mean, you can do it. It's, it's, it's like it's a different world now and it's just about, you know, Rock wins the championship and then, you know, probably would vacate it or something, or I don't, I don't see him coming back for a rematch with Roman. Um, I don't, you know, I know a lot of people wouldn't like that. I don't even think he would, honestly, I don't even think Rock would want to do that. Um, even though, you know, there's even the argument you can do that just because of the publicity. Cause, you know, the nature of everything now is just how much buzz you can get. And, and, you know, the idea of Rock winning the championship, it, it, you know, it goes against everything in old school booking a guy who's, you know, a, a, you know, a part timer who's only in for the one shot and all that. I mean, his role is to put the, the you know, 50 years old is to put the young guy over. But, um, you know, those, you know, and I, I would still I don't think Rock would want to win the championship. I think that if Rock comes back, I think the thing he wants to do is put over Roman. Uh, I think that that's like kind of the family thing and everything anyway. So, um, yeah, I don't really put stock into the idea of them doing that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, Drew can win. I would kind of, I would kind of advocate Drew winning either way, um, just to do something new and just to get it fresh. And if Roman has to be champion going into WrestleMania and have him win the rematch, you know, we've got plenty of months for that to happen. Plenty of big shows. Well, the SmackDown show opened up with uh, Ricochet beating Baron Corbin, so they did not do 50-50 booking. Ricochet beat him again. Beat him uh, clean. Yep, shooting I mean, star press. I mean, yeah, like the first one was the first time Ricochet beat him. It, it, it very much felt like it was all about Corbin losing. And still to a degree... Um, the story you know, is now that he's on a losing streak. But yes, this was yes, a so. clean victory. Yeah, yeah, they're doing a losing streak gimmick with him. So Ricochet winning, like when they started talking about losing streak, it was almost to me obvious Ricochet was going to beat him. Um, but it was it was not as much as the first match. Like the first match, I felt watching it that it's um, you know even though Corbin lost, it was really all about getting Corbin over by losing. Whereas this one, I felt it was both trying to get Corbin over by losing, but also 
a lot more because of the nature of it. It was just this clean shooting star press. It wasn't this fluke slip on a banana peel thing that they do sometimes. Um, and every company does it where, you know, a guy wins, but he doesn't really get over. Um, this one, that was not the case. It was very strong ricochet getting over. And, uh, you know, this regime is different than the other regime. Um, they're pushing guys like ricochet. So it's good. And he's starting. I think the people, the reaction when he came out was a lot better than he usually gets. And I think the people are starting to trust that he's a somebody, um, you know, after, you know, his previous time on the main roster where there were points where the people were getting really behind him. And then they were kind of told, like, he ain't, he ain't somebody, he's a nobody, quit getting behind him. And, and eventually that always works out. You know, usually people will then not get behind people because they've been taught not to. You know, there's always the rare exception. Which, you know, which like the Danielson exception, which has led to so much bad booking there because they try to copy that and that was not a framework of what you do. That was just a fluke of a weird set of circumstances that just happened. So, um, what they're doing with, Rick but yeah, so Ricochet, uh, uh, you know, Ricochet definitely, uh, getting a push, starting to get over. So it's good. We had a last chance fatal four way with Sonya and Natty beating Shotzi and Zaya, Nikki and Dewdrop, and Dana and Tamina. They got a whopping three minutes, which led to the actual no, match later on in the no, show. Not only that, but that was the third straight women's tournament match with the exact same finish, where somebody, you know, there's a, there's a blind tag and. The person doesn't know about the blind tag and then gets pinned by the person who tags in. I mean, it's like it was all on Raw and SmackDown last week. They did the identical finish. This was not identical, but it was it was the same finish, but it was done in a different way. In this one, it was uh, Dana Brooke uh, superplexed. Was it Nikki um, out of the ring? Everybody caught her. But Sonya Deville had secretly tagged in. And when... Um, uh, you know, Nikki ended up in the ring. She was pinned by the person who she didn't even know was uh, the legal person, right? That was it. Was Sonya and Nikki, right? Yeah, Sonya and uh, Nikki. Yeah, y yeah, yeah. So then Sonya and Natty faced Raquel and Aaliyah later on in the show, and they did an injury angle with Aaliyah. Took her out of the match. They double teamed Raquel for minutes on end, and then finally she just made a. One on two comeback, hit the Tejana bomb, got the pin. And so it is Raquel and Leah versus Sky and Kai tomorrow night, tonight on Monday Night Raw. And uh, so, that's the finals of the tournament. So is is Leah going in injured or is it going to be not wrestling or? Well, she was in the ring afterwards, so I guess she's wrestling. Okay. Well, I mean, I think everybody pretty much expected EO and Dakota to win this tournament. They're certainly, they, they were, I would classify them as the heavy favorites from the start, and it's gone exactly, pretty much exactly the way you would expect. And, uh, um, uh, what's, um, Naomi and Sasha Banks should be back any week now. And they are back being listed on the roster, so should be back at any time. We had, uh, Bunch of segments. Roman Reigns, Uso, Sami Zayn. Roman Reigns and Sami in these backstage segments are great. And uh, the Usos were good as well. And it led to uh, Sami and Drew in the main event, which, of course, uh, Drew McIntyre won. Uh, afterwards, uh, the Usos, Roman Reigns, beat down Drew McIntyre. They killed this poor guy with chair shots. Beat the hell out of him. Put him through a table. They sliced and, up his back. Yep. Roman put him in the guillotine. Put a chair over him, posed with the belts as the show went off the air. So, uh, heavy heat angle, but as we'll get into uh, in a moment, we've got SmackDown spoilers, so we'll tell you what's going to happen next week. Yeah, they, they taped two weeks worth because the crew is going to be in Cardiff, and they decided against taping um, anywhere in the UK uh, on the Friday night. And we had a uh, New Day segment as well where they teased retiring. But then the Viking Raiders came out, and they got in a big back and forth, and they revealed that Woods is not injured. He had kendo sticks. They beat up the Viking Raiders, 
and it led to a match on the next show, which I guess we'll so, get into the uh, SmackDown tapings now. So if you don't want SmackDown so, so, spoilers. So real quick, um, that means that, that won't after all that build, it won't be on the pay-per-view. Nope. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.